Welcome to the Secure Connections podcast brought to you by IOTSA, the Internet of Things Security Services Association. I'm Brian Sherman, Content Director for IOTSA, and I have the privilege of hosting today's podcast. My special guest today is Travis Ray, Director of Channel Sales for Highwire High Networks. Welcome to the Secure Connections podcast, Travis. Hey, Brian. Thanks for having me on. Well, it's good to uh, good to get a chance to chat with you again. I know we've uh, encountered each other a, a few times in the industry over the last few years. Um, as a first time guest, what I'd love is for you to tell our listeners a little about yourself. Like, how did you get your start in the channel? Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of organically fell into working with channel partners. Uh, I've been in technology sales for about 15 years and found that I it was a good niche for me. Um, so I started working actually for uh, an MSP uh, years ago and, you know, all of the customers and prospects that I talked to, the conversations would always turn to security. And so I, you know, I started hearing that that was a real uh, need out there and that there was a big opportunity for security. The MSP I was working for wasn't as focused on security. Uh, as, as I would hope we could, you know, be able to take advantage of that. So I started looking around at security firms that is specifically that worked in the channel and, um, Alien Vault stood out as one of those that had a great security offering in the channel. They also had a sales office here in Austin. So I started applying there every 30 days, you know, which is the, uh, the limit. And eventually they called me and said, we'll give you a phone interview if you'll leave us alone. So uh, that turned into an opportunity to um, be a channel account manager at, at Alien Vault. Uh, realized that, yep, security is definitely the space I want to be, and I like working in the channel. So that's, that's kind of how I got here. Very cool. So you've got that unique experience of being on the uh, MSP side as well as being on the vendor side, which uh, I think is very good because you hopefully you've got that empathy and understand what a stressful day is like. Right. For- provider for the security team that's working with the provider and uh, uh, I, I know from my conversations in the past I uh, definitely have that type of empathy and, and understanding too so that, that's fantastic so um, Highwire Networks let's talk about Highwire and uh, tell us a little about the company and their channel philosophy sure so we are 100% channel only uh, have been for our 20 year history and always will be. Um, so having that channel only focus, um, we understand that to be successful in the channel, you have to invest in, in our partners, uh, both you know financially and, and time-wise. Um, reputation is key. We need to be able, you, know, you have to keep a pre- pristine reputation in the channel. It's a small world and uh, you know, bad news and uh, spreads quickly. So uh, we're really all about becoming profitable partners with, with our MSPs and, and bars and integrators. Um, security is, is fairly new for us. Our core business for the last 20 years was helping partners with design, installation, uh, configuration, and support of you know, unified communications, wired and wireless networks, cabling and infrastructure, uh, and electrical systems, but you know, over the we're in 180 countries and have you know hundreds of partners, and we started hearing more and more that they needed help with security. Um, so we again, sort of in that listening and reacting approach, um, our CEO Mark Porter decided to invest the the million dollars and years to uh, build a security operation center and, and a platform to offer partners and. That's how we built Overwatch and where it came from in the last couple of years. Fantastic. So the company is based in uh, in the Chicago area, I believe. We had talked Correct. About yeah, but Batavia, which is a suburb outside of Chicago. Gotcha. And uh, you work virtually, like a, a lot of people are doing these days. It sounds right. Like yeah. Yeah. So I, I had a little bit of a head start on the work from home thing. I've been working from home for about two years now, um, just working remotely, and so I. I got a lot of phone calls from folks who were like, Hey, how are you making this work? This whole work from home thing? What is, what's the secret sauce? You know, how do you make it happen? 
because um, a lot of my my friends and colleagues, it was very new to them. Sure, battling the things that we run into at home, like making sure the kids are not on the internet when you need to be on meetings and all the fun right. stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe me, I understand that part. And the dog is quiet in the background when you're in important meetings. That's the exactly. Thing. Yeah. So. With that in mind, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of changes over the last, uh, say, four months, but it feels like four years, um, with the fundamental shift in how businesses are operating, uh, including the move to the work from home environments like you enjoy, like I've enjoyed many times, too. What are you seeing as the biggest risks for the SMB, uh, you know, coming through this whole, whole transition? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think security awareness is more important now than than ever, it's always been very important. Uh, but as we've seen, the well, what's the expression? There's a, every good crisis is an opportunity, right? Sure. Um, and the, cyber criminals have definitely uh, taken that philosophy to heart. And so, right now, establishing a culture of security awareness in your organization is really important. Um, you know, if it's not a priority for your users, uh, then, you know, who are working from home, they're going to try to cut corners and, and try to get things done um, with all the distractions and, and everything that's going on around us, right? You know, trying to you know, help kids with school and um, just everything going on. So, you know, creating that culture of security awareness and continuously educating your users on, on security and the risks is important. Um, you know, VPNs, we this has become really uh, a popular topic as well that you know VPNs can be manipulated. So MSPs and, and SMB really needs to be looking at uh, their configurations and, and policies, and actively hunting for those those vulnerabilities. Uh, it might be worth looking at some other um, options like zero trust as well as a way to try to protect your data. You know, um, endpoint security is more important now, I think, than maybe it has been in the past as well. But not it's more than just installing an antivirus on on your workstations. You know, the what you send home with employees, you need to be monitoring that endpoint security 24-7. Uh, part of the challenge of that for a lot of MSPs and, and SMB is they don't have that central console or single pane of glass to give them the maximum visibility to, to do that 24-7 monitoring. Um, cloud security and, and UBA are also uh, really, you know, really important right now. You need to be monitoring for suspicious behavior that could be uh, a user has been compromised. You know, but I think most importantly, really, what I've taken away from this and that it is really clearly demonstrated is how much faster cyber criminals are evolved than business. Right? Um, they have jumped on this uh, on COVID and found ways to to make it profitable for them uh, much faster than businesses responded to it in terms of security. You know, there, there's never going to be a silver bullet, right? Yeah. So we need to be continuously innovating and evolving to help prevent cybercrime. Yeah, you had a couple of uh, different things, dynamics going on at the same time. You mentioned you know, people are working from home. They may not necessarily be more lax, but they're distracted. Um, in some cases, they may be more <laughs> more lax as far as their precautions and taking shortcuts. But on the other hand, you know, the cyber criminals definitely learn how to take advantage of any opportunity. Um, and those two two things are a huge risk uh, in the work from home or the you know remote workforce environment. What are, what are uh, you mentioned some of the common ways that businesses can be compromised that way? Um, any other thoughts as far as what you know MSP should be watching for right now? Yeah, um, you know, users in terms of the most common ways that businesses are compromised, you know, users will always be your your biggest weakness. Uh, most cyber incidents start with with phishing and social engineering. So, um, you know, if, if you are already offering you know, uh, phishing simulation and security awareness training. Um, now is a great time to really promote the value of that with your customers, review the data, and and start coming up with ways to help those users that are not passing the simulations as often and failing more often on how to you know uh, educate them better. 
Yeah, um, but it's not just the user's lack of awareness around security that's a major issue. It's also leadership. You know, there's too many organizations that don't manage cybersecurity like all the other risks to their business, when in fact, it's now the biggest risk to their business. So, you know, leadership not properly mitigating cybersecurity risk is going to lead to disruption, you know, period. Um, and, you know, ransomware, <laughs> you know, ransomware is not going anywhere. Uh, just like how the cyber criminals have um, evolved and taken advantage of, of the pandemic in this crisis, uh, they're also constantly evolving ransomware to be more profitable. So those are some things that should be top priorities for, for every organization to try to prevent those most common compromises. There's definitely no honor among thieves when it comes to the cyber criminals. Uh, we've, we've noticed that. I mean, they've gone after hospitals, municipalities, and those that, you know, were the most at risk during this entire pandemic. They have no scruples at all. So, yeah, that's a great point about keeping keeping on terms. Now, one thing, I'm going to shift shift gears here a little bit. Um, as I was doing some research on, on Highwire Networks and learning a little more about you, I noticed the term open XDR in a channel news piece uh, last week. What should MSPs know about open XDR? Can you explain what it is and, and kind of give us an overview? Sure. Yeah. Um, open XDR was, was, was still a fairly new um, technology for me when I came on board here at Highwire Networks. And the at a high level, open XDR um, is about ingesting all the things, right? Not just a, a limited uh, data set from certain security sources, the more security sources like endpoint servers, firewalls, things like that. Um, it is about being able to integrate with any security source, uh, whether that's in the cloud, on an endpoint, in a network, um, and, and user behavior as well, being able to take that into account and provide a single pane of glass um, for your security team, uh, or in this case with Overwatch, for our security team that, that supports our MSP partners uh, to be able to manage and, and monitor and respond faster because they have a, the complete picture and, and can, can integrate with anything that might help them understand the scope of the threat. Gotcha. So it's like the, uh, the we always use the term drinking from the fire hose. It's actually managing the fire hose in this case. For right. Cybersecurity. Absolutely. Yeah. Gotcha. It's, it's all about, you know, uh, it's all about as much data as you can get. Uh, the more data and the more complete picture you have, the better you can understand uh, the, the scope of a risk uh, of a threat and be able to manage it and respond to it quicker. Gotcha. Yeah, I won't go into in depth on the technology involved, but it sounds like a lot of AI and uh, other advanced technologies. So, uh, one of the other things I saw was was Overwatch. I know you've been touting your managed security platform. Can you tell the audience uh, what it does and how it can help the MSP support their SMB clients? Sure. Uh, Overwatch is a security operations center as a platform, right? So with the people, the processes, and the technology to provide 24-7, 365 security operations center services for, for MSPs clients. Um, the, the biggest challenge out there for MSPs is, is how to um, get everything into a single place and then the people and the processes to actually manage it and respond to it. So we, you know, by outsourcing that to Overwatch, um, they get open XDR, next gen SIM, uh, SOAR, security orchestration and automated response, AI and machine learning built in, UBA and, and 15 other integrated um, applications that are in the platform combined with our security operations center and the people in the processes to monitor you know, their client's entire attack surface. So, and monitoring is just one component though. Uh, that's great. Monitoring is, is now, it's, it's almost become the easier part of it because there are so many SOC as a service solution providers out there. Uh, but in security, you know, speed kills, right? So being able to take automated response and orchestrate those security response uh, combined with the human element who can customize and actually go in and dig in and find out what's going on and know how to be able to respond to it and do that either automatically or, you know, human eyes on glass doing it uh, means that we can help respond to threats and prevent incidents from becoming 
full blown breaches and not disrupt your client's business. Very good. Now, the unfortunate part about a podcast is it's hard for anybody to see an example of what the interface looks like, for example. But w what would MSPs see when they look in the platform? How, how can they control what's their management options look like? Sure. Yeah, great question. So it is fully multi-tenant, uh, meaning that you the, the partner has access to their entire uh, customer base, and then they can drill down into each customer as its own tenant. They can even give access uh, read-only access to clients who maybe are a little bit larger, maybe have some security-focused uh, individuals on the on the for that client. Want to be able to log in and do it, you know, search and um, review the dashboards and data themselves. So that gives them the ability to not only you know have some access to it, but they also know in the back end we're helping with with that monitoring and providing the resources they just don't have in house to do it themselves. Um, but it, it's all point and click. It's very easy. The GUI is, I mean, look, the GUI looks like a video game. It looks like something you would see in a movie about, you know, the NSA security operations center or something, or, you know, the CIA, uh, uh, you know, black, black room or something. Um, but it's all very intuitive and it's very easy to use. Uh, it's customizable dashboards, customizable reports. You can make it look the way that each partner wants it to look to get the information they can the landing page that they want to see and be able to jump in and, and do their own searches and run their own custom reports besides what we schedule and automate for them. Cool. And uh, when we get to the end, too, we'll also uh, make sure everybody knows where to go find maybe some of those resources to get a better look and uh, idea of what uh, what it does. But what, what would you say is your special sauce? What's your uh, what makes Overwatch and Highwire Networks different uh, from the other offerings? Because I know there's a lot of offerings in the security space now coming out and, and I know MSPs are getting confused and you know, sure. trying to figure out which one would best. But what do you think is your unique uh, proposition for the channel? Yeah. So. You know, because we built this ourselves and listened to our, our partners who were asking for it and, and asked them what what is most important to you? What's your give us your wish list of you know the right SOC partner? That let us be able to to go to market with a really attractive pricing model that's based on uh, a flat per user model, right? So most MSPs are charging their customers per seat. Uh, we can help you we can fit right into that model. There's no minimums. So if you have those smaller customers, if you want to make this mandatory in your stack and you have those smaller customers, same flat per user fee for those smaller customers as your, your larger customers. Uh, I think that makes it a lot easier for MSPs to be able to go out and offer this and sell it to their clients. Um, you know, and, and SOAR is, is great. I think it's, it's, a, <laughs> Uh, it, it's an awesome way to be able to make security faster and respond faster. Um, but we can also customize the, the response and rules of engagement by our security experts to each partner and, and even more specifically to each one of their clients. Instead of saying, here's how we do this, you've got to make you know your clients fit into our box in terms of how we can respond and what we can do. Um, and our implementation uh, is, is very, very flexible. We can deploy virtually or on-prem really easily. And we provide, our service gives MSPs a way to monitor and detect and respond to threats across their customer's entire attack surface versus just some of those assets that are in the environment. Yeah, no, those are great points. And one of the areas, you know, cybersecurity is, is obviously different uh, depending on each capability of the MSP in particular. You mentioned you, you'd work for some that, that it wasn't a prevalence back in the day. Now it's becoming more crucial, but also their their advanced level of cybersecurity expertise you know, is a different scale too. Scalability seems to be one of the limiting factors that MSPs are, are trying to build out in their cybersecurity stack. So w what advice would you offer to them in this area? And I'm not sure how that plays in with, with Overwatch. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that is definitely another one of those things that we heard from partners, right? That um, being able to scale was difficult, whether that was um, how they offered to clients or being able to grow as a business and have a partner that could grow with them. So some, some good things to think about would be, you know, how can you future proof your stack for, for maximum scalability? Right. Is 
are you choosing technologies that um, integrate and can automate as much as possible, right? Uh, so that way, if you decide to rip and replace something in your stack with a, a more, maybe a more advanced security tool or, or a, a different platform, like you switched to Office 365 from G Suite, can the technologies in your stack and your partners, can they integrate with that, right? Can they make that transition uh, smooth and easy? Uh, and maybe most importantly, I find partners who will invest in you. If partners aren't willing to spend some time and money to make the the, pro, the partnership as profitable as possible, then go find the partner who will, right? Um, who will help you build APIs or, or maybe, uh, you know, certain plugins and integrations and give you advice on that, right? Who you can actually consult with them and say, hey, we're thinking about switching email security platforms, right? What, what, what can, what advice can you give us, right? Um, how, how can they consult with you and, and uh, collaborate with you on, on those kinds of scaling issues? Yeah, and I think the, uh, the flexibility when it comes to the solutions and then you know, figuring out how it all prices in, that, that's where a lot of MSPs are struggling these days. Right. Um, and I know many of the experts suggest is, you know, pricing shouldn't be an issue when it comes to cybersecurity. Build the stack you want, but then understanding the MSP is if you're going to a nonprofit and they have a budget that's capped for this year, there's only so much you can do too. So it's compromising right. sometimes to figure out what's the best fit. For each yeah, I, I, exactly. And I think a lot of our, a lot of our competitors have, you know, minimums that make it really difficult for MSPs to, to scale their offering up and down. Right. Um, if they have those smaller customers that you know, they might only be paying you $500 a month already for, for the services and to add, you know, SOC as a service is another $500 and it doubles their cost. You know, security is important, but that that's just could be that's just a deal breaker for some clients. So um, having the pricing model where you know exactly where it fits in your stack and you know you're going to make money on it and you don't have to worry about, you know, hopefully I just break even. Um, that makes a big difference. Yeah. It's a different factor, I think, when you come into like compliance. If you get clients that have to adhere to this, need certain things in place in order to uh, to meet whatever the regulatory compliance is or you know industry or it, it could be you know government induced there's a little less flexibility there and msps can you know, obviously charge up uh to the right. appropriate profit level but how, how does compliance uh, what are your thoughts as far as compliance and the cybersecurity that uh, that your partners are are um, running into sure so you know from a philosophical standpoint, I think that cybersecurity and compliance are two different things that live in the same world, right? Um, they compliance, being compliant doesn't mean you're secure. Uh, and having cybersecurity doesn't mean that you're compliant. So you want to be able to have a partner that understands the, the compliance and what kind of framework are they using? And how does that match up with you? If a lot of your customers are NIST and maybe the partner is more focused on on HIPAA, that might not be a good fit. If a partner is more, their framework is something that's more neutral, like the CIS 20 critical controls, that those really map well to just about any compliance, right? Mm -hmm. it makes it a lot easier for them. Uh, but selling on compliance is, I found is uh, really limits your ability to to get the to win deals because when you're selling on compliance it's just about checking a box right right and that's you're going to be looking for the cheapest solution possible so you know compliance almost needs to be secondary as something that an advantage that your service provides versus the reason why customers need it yeah the, the excellent points because i think you know Checking the boxes and fitting it into certain parameters is one thing, but it really comes down to comprehensive of protecting their data outside of outside of what the government or or a, a uh, an industry uh, association tells you to do, like PCI compliance or right. or the others. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that's where some of the MSPs I think struggle too is the have to haves versus the need to haves and must haves on the security side of it. And finding that right. balance can be, be difficult which is why it's probably good to have a platform as a service where you can turn things on and off as needed too. 
Well, Absolutely. Happens. Right. You know, meet that customer's needs uh, individually versus being kind of locked into here's a box. We need you to fit into it. Very good. Now, listeners can learn more about Highwire Networks and Overwatch Managed Security Platform as a service on the IOTSA Security Solutions Showcase page. That's one place they can find out more about you. Um, but how hard is it for MSPs to become a Highwire partner and begin offering Overwatch to the clients? Let's talk about the program. Sure. So our, our partner program uh, is very easy to join. There's no financial commitment or investment to join the program. Uh, you'll get access to our partner portal. We have hundreds of pieces of content that are very, I mean, it's literally drag and drop your logo to be able to co-brand that content. Uh, you can even build marketing campaigns if you don't already have your own marketing platform uh, inside of our partner program, or you can use that content and, and pull it into your marketing platform to educate customers. Um, the, the pricing is very straightforward. Like I said, it's, you know, it's a flat per user fee. We have some other models as well. You know, we worked with some partners who are used to an ingestion pricing model, and that's how they've been scoping their clients and understanding it. Even though that's more difficult, that's the way they've been doing it. So we can do it that way as well for them. Um, same thing if they're used to a more per asset, you know, um, critical asset versus you know standard asset pricing model. Uh, we can we can do that as well. So we've got different ways to do it. We found that the per seat model is, is the most popular and what most of our MSPs like to use, uh, but we want to be fe flexible there so that it easy is easy for you to join the program and add this to your stack and go out and sell it. Um, we also offer MDF for all of our partners. Uh, we're, we're very generous with the N MDF because you know, we're channel only. So that's our, our way of being able to help partners go out and get more business. We don't have as many, you know, end users and direct customers who might be coming to us because they don't they don't know us. The, the channel does, so MDF is a great way for us to help grow that partnership and invest in partners. Um, but basically, you know, it, best way to get started is reach out, uh, reach out, find out if if Overwatch is a good fit for what you're you're hoping to do, and we'll learn more about your goals and what you're offering now, and and try to find out if uh, the partnership's the right way to go. Good. So it sounds like you have white label opportunities, check. Um, you have flexible, a flexible model for them to work with and scalability. So those, uh, those check the right boxes, at least from uh, my discussion with MSP. So that's fantastic. So um, Travis, before we sign off today, any final thoughts you'd like to share with our audience? Sure. Um, Brian, you know, I, I, I preach this all the time, so I'm going to get up on my soapbox real quickly on this again. But uh, security is never going to stop being a risk that needs to be managed and mitigated. If if you, the MSP, are not already talking to your customers and educating them about cybersecurity as a risk, someone else is or, or will be very soon. It's, it's not a differentiator anymore, like we said earlier. It, it is a requirement now. Uh, MSP should be seriously considering and strategizing on how to make uh, security standard and mandatory in all their offerings. And that's that when I say security, I mean advanced security more than just antivirus, firewall, and, and you know, email security. Um, really being able to help them manage their cybersecurity as a risk with the right kind of offerings. And it should be mandatory. Um, you know, start educating your clients on cybersecurity. Do it continuously, educate them to their business, and not just another piece of technology or cost to their, their IT center, and protect them from cybercrime. When you, when you do that, you transition from another service provider to an invaluable partner. That they, they have to work, they, they need to, to be profitable. Very good. Well, great points. And I'm looking forward to uh, doing a follow-up with you where we can talk about this fire hose of uh, information coming in that uh, yeah. MSPs need to be managing too. I'd like to go more in depth with that uh, in a future podcast. So, Absolutely. Fantastic. We've got some really cool demos on our YouTube page. If you just want to see the interface and learn a little bit more about it, awesome. um, check us out there. Uh, we have some of those videos on our website as well or, um, just reach out to me on LinkedIn or, or whatever way is best for you. We're really excited to start working with the uh, IOTSA community. Fantastic. 
Um, on behalf of IOTA, I'd like to thank uh, Travis, Travis Ray from Highwire Networks for joining us today. Uh, check back each week for the next Secure Connections podcast, and that is IOTSA.com, I-O-T-S-S-A.com. Stay safe, and please have a great day. We appreciate you stopping by. Awesome. Thanks, Brian.